Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. On this channel, we talk about bookish content and things of that nature. Today, we're gonna be talking about Richard Wright's native son. Now, this is a book that I recently just finished. It's a phenomenal book, I wanna start off by saying, a really good story. Native Son is considered a staple in American literature, specifically African-American literature, because of its volumes of speaking for being black in America around the 1930s. The story itself really does speak volumes for what we're going through right now as far as black America goes with police brutality in the current justice system and fight that we are going through. The story follows Bigger Thomas, a teenage boy struggling to find his personality and during his youth. Uh, in 1930, you know, we've got a lot going on. The civil rights movement isn't for another 30 years. Women's suffrage hasn't happened. The uh, gay rights movement hasn't happened. People really weren't speaking up for people without rights at this point. Uh, that being said, this story is not for the lighthearted. So, Bigger Thomas is this enraged character who is upset with how white America at the time of 1930 makes him feel for being black. Uh, in the story, we follow along and watch him struggle with his mother and his family dynamic and his siblings um, to go forth and find a job to help them. Uh, Bigger eventually finds a job. Ironically, the landlord of the apartment where him and his family live at ends up being his boss, Mr. Dalton. Bigger goes to meet his um, new boss, Mr. Dalton, and he is introduced to Mary, Mr. Dalton's daughter. She's um, somewhat of a player within the Communist Party, apparently. At this point, our main character is the chauffeur of Mr. Dalton's daughter, driving her wherever she wants to go. Eventually, we find out Bigger has a hard time um, lying to his boss for his boss's daughter. Uh, this, in its own way, sets up the stage for us to understand what it was like for him in the 1930s, questioning if he should not lie also makes him feel like he's being put further into a corner. Maybe he should lie for her. And in the story, really does just show how someone can act within fear. The turning point in this story does involve someone's death. Something happens in the story that Bigger cannot take back because of the color of his skin and because of the scenario at hand here bigger is chosen to move forward in a way that helps him knowing that the odds are already against him the reason why i feel like this story is really important right now to americans is because it really really just opens up the bridge to uh, understanding what it was like to be black in america before a time where rules and ideals and morals even made a play for advocating for black lives to matter. Um, this is 1930 and we're talking about someone who is so scared to even um, be next to a white woman in a skirt for the uh, notion that maybe there's some man looking at him and assuming the worst. Um, there is a part in the book later where Bigger is uh, interrogated about his his understanding of what went on that night of the said night and Bigger literally he, in his head, we hear him make notions like, no, no, don't say that because they're going to think, what are you doing, boy? He's already made himself out to feel less in that sense. This is a term called cognitive dissonance. When your feelings don't align with your actions. And that being said, it was within his means to figure out how to solve it that way that he could ease his mind. Um for the said conflict. Right from the start, Bigger feels that he's going to jail, regardless of how he ends this story, regardless if he tells the truth. That just brings it to a turning point that's even more than the main plot. For me personally, I started to like the character in this book and then eventually started to hate the character in this book because of how he's perceived. Bigger as a character embodies black rage in the 1930s 
and it's hard and heavy to read but when reading this book you need to remind yourself that there was also an underlying oppression going on in this story there was the boss who owns the uh building that Bigger's family lives in and also owns the uh, place of employment that Bigger works, uh, paying three times the rent in 1930. This book is truly a deep experience and I recommend it for anybody who right now is searching for any kind of light on this situation or for anyone who um, wants to say all lives matter or anyone who wants to say blue lives matter i urge you to read a book like this and try to put yourself in someone else's shoes if you're familiar with this book or read this book recently please comment below i'd love to have a discussion with you or talk about some of the points that you liked about the book what didn't you like about the book uh were there any questions that you guys had or any ideas you wanted to um shed to light uh as far as this book remember we can do a lot with knowledge and for you guys to be educated on this part of our history is very important regardless if it's uh relevant to you or not it is still our past have a good day guys